So now when our, um, our client app uh, starts up, or more specifically when the task board page that we just edited, when that kicks off, so when you go to a task board page, um, and that mounts to the DOM and that all the code we just wrote uh, executes. We're going to connect to the hub, but we don't want, um, we don't just want to have, you know, all clients be equal because we don't want to send all updates to all clients. We, we have our, in the application I just showed you, you know, task boards are separate and unique, right? So task board 1003 shouldn't have tasks from task board 1004, right? So we're going to create a method on this hub that's going to allow us to, uh, once we connect, join a specific group. And we will define that as join task board, which will take a task board ID. And because we're inheriting from hub here, we have a property called groups. And we can add people to groups. And if the group doesn't uh, exist, it will be created when we call add to group. Um, and first, we need to say who we want to add to the group. And we can, uh, we have anonymous users <coughs> in this application. There's no authentication happening here. And, but we have this uh, context property, which has a connection ID property, which can be used to identify specific clients that have connected to the hub. And then the second parameter we want here is going to be the name of the group. We're going to use the task board ID, but it expects a string, so we'll just call to string. Why are you getting up? Return to Oh, it did this on me. So now we have a way to join groups. Let's make sure that when our client uh, connects to the hub, it joins the appropriate group. And we'll do that here um, after we connect. And we'll do a thing. Um, I'm going to make this a little bit more versatile right now for reasons that will become clear later. So we're actually going to have this connect to hub take another parameter call callback. Find that as something connection. Dot. Uh, there's a couple ways you can invoke methods on the server from the client on the server hub from the client. Uh, you can use invoke if you care about uh, knowing when that task completes and whatnot. I don't care. I'm going to use another uh, method of doing that, which is called send, and I'm going to pass to send the name of the method we just defined and the parameter it expects. And if it expects multiple parameters, I can pass multiple parameters. And I happen to have the task board ID on this uh, property of the class here. Task board ID. So we've got that defined. And let's pass this along. OK, so now when our client connects, when the connection is started, I should say, it will then call that callback we just passed in. And what that's going to do is execute join task board on the hub that we created in the server. And it's going to pass the task board ID. So it knows who it is, uh, or what group it wants to join, rather. All right, almost there to showing what impact this is having on the application, OK? Let's hop over to. Work Items Controller. And we are going to leverage that dependency injection that we set up by adding SignalR. Remember, we did services.addSignalR, and I made that great joke that everyone loved about how it was done with my talk. Uh, <clears throat> so we're going to use something called the iHub context. And we're going to give it my task board hub. We'll call it hub context doesn't like any of this. I'm not going to give me 
the same light bulb for my own thing. That's better. Okay, cool. So now in this uh, in this controller, we can use this hub context. Let's go down to where we update a single task. And once we've had a successful save with Entity Framework, we are going to leverage that hub context and we are going to execute Okay, so I'm going to say, for my hub context, I want to talk to my clients specifically. I want to talk to the group, and I have a group from the work item that, that I'm working with here. So let me get that work items task board ID, and to that group, I want to send this work item. How do we do that? <laughs> we send async. And uh, we are going to, just like on the client, we passed in, uh, when we sent uh, using the connection, we, we said like, hey, we want to execute join task board, and we want to pass to join task board this parameter. Uh, likewise, on the server, you're saying, I want to execute update task, and I want to send update task this parameter, and we're just going to send it the work item. Okay. Last part before you get to see some magic happen is uh, back to Taskboard Hub. No, wrong place. Back to Taskboard page. All right. Let's put this. I don't care what this is. Okay. We're going to say on when I receive the message called, what did we just call it? Update task. What we called it? Anybody know? Meatball. What did we call it? We called it update task. Yes, we did. Let's go back to on update task. I'm gonna get a work item. We'll just call it an item here. And with that work item, what I want to do? Let me consult my notes. Basically, we want to, if our client has that work item, we want to, we're just going to remove the work item that we have with that same ID and replace it with this new one. Um, and if we didn't have that work item already, then we're going to try to remove the one that we have with the matching ID. But if we don't, no big deal. And then we'll add the, uh, the new task in. So it's going to look a little something like this. Work items. I have all of the work items that the client knows about in state. And I'm going to filter. Out. I'm going to filter out. Any item matching the ID of the item we're talking about here. And then I'm going to add the item. So now I've got a fresh list of work items, which either has the new work item that I didn't have before, or the updated work item for a work I already had, stuff like that. <clears throat> and I'm going to update the state. This is a kind of React thing here, but essentially I'm replacing the work items I knew about before with this new set of work items. Let's see how we did. Let's stop this. Anybody remember the task board ID we were just using 1003. earlier? 1003. 1003. Let's see if we can get back there. Still a task there. Uh, <clears throat> let's refresh. 
Okay, let's see if we can move this test to, no, no, let's not do that. That's not what I just did. We updated the update task nonsense. So, we have a new task, and let's see if that new task shows up. Oh my goodness, wow. brilliant. Thank you so much. Oh, please, no, it was all you guys. <laughs> all right, so we can add new tasks, and we can update them, and they will, um, you know, that message will be sent to all clients which belong to this board, right? The 1003. Cool. Oh man. Let's keep moving. How's my time? You got another hour and a half. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's talk about scaling Signal R. Uh, first, we'll talk about if you were to try scaling your Signal R app without Signal R service, what you would need is a few things. You need a backplane. So if you have multiple instances of your SignalR app, you would need a way to keep, keep those messages in sync across. I've never used Redis, I've never set up a backplane, can't answer any questions about that. Sounds like a real headache, right? That's why we're going to talk about SignalR service instead. Oh, also, <clears throat> to note your uh, clients, they've got to stay connected to the same uh, instance of your, um, of your SignalR app. Right, so let's say it's, oh, you got a lot of demand, let's spin up some more of these servers. Well, your existing clients won't be spread across those new servers you just spun up. They're gonna be stuck to whichever ones uh, they connected to in the first place. So it's not, it's not fantastic. Also, you can't really you know, separate your ASP.NET Core application from the SignalR piece of it, right? So if, you, if you've got your SignalR stuff baked into your ASP.NET Core application, then if your SignalR resources need to grow, so does your ASP.NET Core application need to grow. And maybe it's not all that big, it's not a big deal, but maybe it is, and you didn't need to grow your whole application just to expand your, um, you know, uh, how many instances you have spun up of your SignalR app. So with SignalR service, you don't need any of that. No backplane setup, it's all automated. You just say, hey, Azure, I want a new SignalR service. It gives you a, a connection string, you throw that connection string in your app, done deal. It's awesome. It scales by itself. It knows, you know, it can detect the demand on it and spin up more instances or whatever, all automatic, automatically under, under the covers. And if you're running your, your uh, web app, you know, an app service, then it's doing that too independently. It's great. So, let's see uh, how easy that is. Okay, so. You can only use SignalR service with Azure? SignalR service is an Azure service, yes. Good question. Uh, let's go to the Azure portal. So if you don't use Azure, you use what, IAS? So you can, you, you can host your application however you like. Um, but, uh, so let's go back to that slide. This app can be hosted however. Um, but this piece of your whole system, the SignalR piece, will be running in Azure. Does that make sense? No? It's a PaaS offering. That's not right. So if you want to... You can have your web app in, you know, in Azure. You can have an IIS. You can have it in those other people that produce cloud services. So what I did is I went to the Azure portal and I searched for SignalR service and I hit create. And uh, it's going to need some kind of unique name. Does that work? Yeah, all right. We'll put it in the same resource group I already created. Uh, very little configuration here. I'm just going to pick the free tier, like you do when you're playing around with Azure. That's it. I'm going to hit create, and it's going to create, and when it's done, it'll have a connection string for me to use my application. I've already spun up one of these, because sometimes it can take a minute. We're going to use this one here, and this connection string here. Let's put that to work somehow. I don't know. Hopefully my notes will tell me what to do, right? Okay. Stop. Stop doing what you're doing. Stop this. Okay. Um, first.
first, I'm going to, so the Azure SignalR stuff isn't built in. So we're going to add a new get package for that. Dot add, add package. I usually use a GUI for this. Microsoft dot Azure dot signal R work, please. No, where am I? Let's go back to our startup. <clears throat> and we are already adding signal R, and on top of that, let's add Azure signal R right there at the top. It's begging to be used. And the only other change we're going to make here is where we're using signal R, we're going to use Azure signal R instead. And um, <clears throat> so it's, uh, yeah. So this right here is going to look in our, in the various sources for configuration information for an ASP.NET Core application. It's going to look for a connection string um, with a particular key. So we're going to, we're going to add that using, using user secrets uh, right quick. So we're going to say dot net user secrets set. So the key it's looking for is Azure. And you can specify another key, but by default it's looking for Azure colon signal R colon connection string. And the value will be this connection string right here. It gives you two in case you need to like change your connection string. You can start running off the second one, change the first one. Yada yada. Is that going to work? Okay, very good. So, um, now our application is going to use the SignalR service to power the SignalR real-time functionality you saw before. But who wants to see the same old stuff we saw before? Let's go ahead and implement something new. Let's go to our work item controller. So instead of using the hub, you created, right? So we'll still, um, our hub is still being used, but the connections, um, uh, so that persistent connection that that uh, that SignalR creates, instead of it being made to our web app endpoint, it's going to be made. It's going to be like directed to the um, URL where that Azure service is running. Those are two of them. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, yeah, I think it handles it automatically. But uh, you know, feel free to research that on your own. <laughs> I, I did not run into any issues there, or or um, <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> like, if it's because uh, you're referring to the slide where you have to maintain a connection to the same instance, is that right? I thought you were saying that's the reason to use right. Redis yeah. Or Azure. This yeah, so you want to use you want to use uh, the SignalR service host running in Azure, so that you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. So yes, yes, I'll say more confidently, and that way we can just keep moving forward. No, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, I believe you. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay, so when we update tasks, which gets called when we move tasks around, we will call using the hub context using the power of uh, the SignalR service. Is it group? Groups? Groups. Uh, and it's expecting. Do I have the task board ID or something? Task board ID. Very good. To string. With a send async. We're going to say, hey, I want you to call something called update work items on the client feed it all these work items that just got updated. Great. Let's go to our client. Oh, I keep clicking on the wrong tab. 